Well, what's up everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the 2024 Mazda CX-90. This one is a Turbo S Premium Plus, finished off in artesian red, and the MSRP is around $58,000. Underneath the hood of this 2024 Mazda CX-90, you're gonna find the 3.3 liter turbocharged inline six cylinder engine with 340 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. It also features a mild hybrid system and you can open up the engine cover and actually take a look at part of the engine along with that turbo on that side. So kind of neat, they give you a movable engine cover like that. Now with that, it has an eight speed automatic transmission. It is a rear wheel drive biased all wheel drive system. Curb weight is around 4,900 pounds. Towing capacity is 5,000 pounds. This SUV also runs on a 19.6 gallon fuel tank and you're looking at 23 miles per gallon in the city with 28 out on the highway. Overall length is 200.8 inches with a wheelbase at 122.8. Width is 84.9. Height is 68.7 and ground clearance is 8.1 inches. Moving on to the styling with Mazda's new three row SUV. This has a pretty bold front end appearance. I also like how small the headlights look in relation to the car itself. You can see the LED lights, the daytime running lights, and then I really like how there's the LED strip inside of the grille surround. You can see all the chrome trim surrounding the gloss black trim. You got all your parking sensors, forward facing camera, Mazda logo right in the center. There's active grill shutters behind that to improve efficiency and cooling when needed. And then I like how all the body color surrounds this front bumper. You got a nice trim piece on the far side with an air inlet, more chrome trim on the lower portion, and then more air inlets to provide more cooling. Overall, it's a pretty nice looking family SUV. It's pretty bold and it has an elegant touch to it. There's a sharp line on each side of the hood fading towards the windshield, just giving it that wider look for the hood certainly does have some nice road presence. At the side profile, you can see how the body color continues with paint to match fender flares, which are a really good touch. And this even has a set of 21 inch wheels. Got a nice two-tone design, multi-spoke look. Got your inline six badge on the side with some chrome trim, and then very clean for that side profile. There's chrome trim down below with Mazda written on the back part, body color door handles along with mirror caps, LED turn signal, integrated camera, and then more chrome trim surrounding all the windows. Got some black for the B pillar and C pillar, panoramic roof up top with silver roof rails, and the side profile. It's a larger SUV, really good proportions. I like how it kind of slopes backwards, giving it a more luxury focus vibe. Then you have a nice smooth body line for the entire rear fender. Nice set of LED taillights really aggressive looking with the coloring. Then you can see the third brake light up on top, body color spoiler up there, all of your badging, body color rear bumper, more chrome trim, and then just a little bit of plastic trim with your parking sensors. Pretty cool look overall. I think it comes together very well. It's a really good style. Taking a look at Mazda's key fob, you just have the Mazda logo and then all your buttons on the side for a lock, unlock, and the tailgate release. You keep the car locked, your key in your pocket. Of course, all you gotta do is grab the door handle. It'll unlock and we can take a look at the interior. This one has the tan Napa leather interior, which certainly has a pretty luxurious look to it. Taking a look at the door panel now, you have this nice micro suede in the tan color, a plastic material that kind of looks like wood, and then a dark gray trim piece. Get your release handle, lock and unlock, all the window and mirror controls, and then some padding for your armrest. Got some tan stitching with a good grab handle, storage down below, and then all your power controls on the seat. Along the seat, you got the smooth leather and then a nice micro suede throughout the center with a leather material for the stripe. Pretty cool looking with the quilted pattern as well, and then the smooth leather up to the headrest. I really like the steering wheel finish in the two-tone. You got the black and beige leather, which really looks luxurious, chrome trim, and then I even like the beige on the airbag cover. And then now inside the 2024 Mazda CX-90, keep my foot on the brake, we can fire it up. You are gonna get some annoying chimes that are just gonna keep going and going. That is the one annoying thing, the chimes in this car are awful. However, you have a nice LCD display, speedometer right in the center, you can also see your tack on the left side, a few vitals over on the far right, and then different drive modes will adjust that as well. You have your drive mode over here, 
If we toggle this up and down, you can see your off-road, normal, and sport mode. When you're using cruise control and things like that, the gauges will change just a little bit. So it's nice to see what you're able to get in this screen. Not all too configurable, however, still a nice touch to get a few things that will pop up throughout the screen. We have more controls on this left side. You can see Bluetooth and audio, cruise control on the far right side, and then the right stock is gonna have all the windshield wipers. Taking a look over at the left, we have headlight control and turn signal. And then down below the steering wheel, you can see parking sensor, traction control, safety sensor, and then memory seating with the tailgate release. You have more of this suede material, one of your air vents, big heads up display system, and then the dashboard is pretty neat. You just have this plastic material up top and then all this micro suede on the front part of the dashboard along with the lower dash finish and more of the tan. Taking a look at the screen right now, we have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. If you touch anything, it is not touchscreen, unfortunately, so you just have to use the dial down below. So we have all these controls. We have a home icon, a rotary dial as well. So just adjusting a few things, you can go into information within the car, see a few different items, hit the back button. We have entertainment as well for audio and things like that. Communication for your phone integration. Of course, nice size navigation screen and then settings within the car. So not my favorite infotainment screen, obviously. It does give you about what you would need. And then if we go ahead and put the car into reverse, we have a nice size backup camera, top-down view. If I go into drive, you get that front view as well. And then from here, using the rotary dial, I can go left and right here and see a few different angles. So if we go back into drive, we can also get a good look at both of your front wheels. Underneath the screen, you're gonna see two climate control vents and then all the climate controls are for physical buttons. So this does make it nice and easy. We have heated and ventilated seating along with the heated steering wheel. You can toggle your dual zone temperature, fan speed in the center, a few more controls on the far right side, and then your AC icon. Down below, we have a wireless phone charging pad along with a 12 volt, more of this plastic material with this cool stripe. And then opening that up, we have two smaller cup holders, so they're not quite able to fit larger water bottles. We have our shifter in the center along with the downhill assist, a shortcut icon to all your cameras. And then down below that, park and brake and brake hold, volume control as well, and just a pretty sleek looking center console. We have more of this black leather material with the contrast stitching, and you can open up these individually, which is a cool touch for sure. And then underneath, you can see a good size of storage. Glove box over on the right side, about what you would expect. And then one last look at the interior. This really does look super cool with the contrasting colors. Nice use of materials as well. So for the price point, I think it's a pretty nicely appointed interior. Got a full panoramic sunroof. You're gonna see opening right up here for your sunglass. And then we have a few dome light controls as well. And then a thin mirror with garage door buttons. Moving on to the rear seat space, I grab the door handle and open it up. The door panel's finished off just like we see up front with the colors and everything. You have the micro suede. This does have a set of manual sunshades. And then for the second row, you have a nice set of manual controlling seats, all the same materials with the micro suede, the leather material, cool stitching, and then the smooth leather up on top. This one has a nice center console with contrast stitching. There are large cup holders, storage as well. And once again, the independent opening center console. So pretty cool for your armrests. And then down below, we have air vents, USB controls, you have heated and ventilated second row with all the climate controls and there's storage behind each of these front seats. And then if I go ahead and hop inside at five foot 11, with the driver's seat at my height, I have great amount of legroom in here, as you can tell. And then with the levers, I can easily recline the seats. And there's also a bar up in front to slide it forwards and back. So this is a pretty nice second row as a full grown adult. I mean, I could literally be back here for a very long family road trip. I have it fully reclined right now. This is a pretty good place to be with the skylight and all the glass. It definitely feels nice and open. Seats are at a good angle. Armrests are in a good place as well. So I think Miles has done a pretty nice job with the second row seating. And then to move on to the third row, you can easily pull the lever on the top of this seat and it will get this seat forwards. You can push it all the way and easily climb into the back. Now the third row in this car is pretty decent. We were on a trip yesterday with it and I was sitting in the third row for about an hour, hour and a half. At my height, I will say with this seat in a comfortable position for the second row, I kind of had to sit a little sideways with my legs towards the center. Given you have this console, you don't really have the ability to stretch your legs out. This seat itself is padded well, reclines in a good angle, nice headrest. 
you have cup holders, USB ports, and good size windows. So for a three row SUV, and actually there's air vents too, which is a really nice touch. But for a three row that isn't the crazy biggest SUV out there, it is nice that you can comfortably fit back here. Two people could be fine too for an hour or so. So not too bad for sizing. Moving on to the cargo area, there's a button underneath the Mazda logo. Power lift gate will open up. With the third row up, you still have quite a lot of storage behind those seats. And then you have a little bit of storage down here, as you can tell. With that, we have some plugs on the far right side, LED light and storage on the left. And then by just grabbing these handles, headrests are gonna pop down and we can easily fold these. So with the third row down now, you can see just how much more space you're gonna get. Definitely a nice size rear end. And then if we take a look at these seats now, just pulling the recline lever, sliding the seat back and pushing this down, you can see they're gonna fold down nice and flat. Might be a little bit of a concern given this is not carpet, so if you're using this for utility, might wanna put something on top of that. But nonetheless, still a lot of storage space in here. If we take one last look with the two seats, you can see just how much space the CX-90 is gonna offer. And then of course we have your button up on top and we can easily close the lift gate. All right, setting off now. Not too bad, you know, this thing is peppy enough. It's certainly not fast for given it has a really cool engine, honestly, underneath the hood. But, you know, for a family three row SUV, it gets up to speed nicely, really not gonna complain. As far as some normal driving, you know, the seats are pretty comfortable. They could be more padded. They're not insanely soft. However, I mean, they're very supportive. I really wouldn't have an issue for a long drive. Great visibility out the windshield. All the mirrors do a great job. Over your right shoulder, honestly, nothing to complain about for visibility. You have a lot of glass in here. My favorite thing for sure is the color of this interior. I'm not the biggest fan of this micro suede. It doesn't look like real Alcantara. It's just a little bit too fuzzy. I honestly wouldn't mind this just being leather. I think they could have done a better job on the micro suede. Other than that, this is a really cool interior. The steering wheel looks so cool. I love the chrome trim to it. I mean, this feels like a nice car and at the price point, sub 60 grand for a real three row SUV. I honestly think this is really well priced. It's quiet in here, pretty smooth to drive. Slow speeds, the transmission can be a little jerky. I notice if I'm slowing down, like if a car in front of me is gonna be turning and then I accelerate, it takes a little bit to downshift. You can feel it and it kind of jerks the car a little bit. So I wouldn't mind maybe a little bit more refinements to the slow speed transmission gear changes. Other than that, I mean, steering's nice. It's got a heavy feel to it. However, it just makes it feel nice and direct. Obviously, it's very lightweight and easy to use, but it's more direct than some other cars in this class. So I like that. It's got some feedback to it. Good armrests, good seating position with all the adjustments. Not really too noisy or anything in here. As far as suspension goes, I can feel the bumps. You know, this doesn't really drive like a ultra luxurious car or anything like that. So it just drives more like a nice normal SUV. So you can feel some bumps. It's got a little bit of that feedback to it. So it's not like the most luxurious driving SUV while it looks really cool and luxurious. You know, it doesn't really quite drive like a luxury car, but nonetheless, good ride quality, feels nice in here. And uh, yeah, power brakes, they do a good job as well. The interior technology is fine. You know, I think if you're looking for something that isn't the craziest with all the tech, so many screens, too much stuff that you're never gonna use, Mazda keeps it simple. You know, you still have a digital gauge cluster, not really all too configurable, but when you're on the cruise control, things like that, you know, it gives you a nice look to it. Hitting the bumps, you know, the car feels pretty solid. Biggest complaint, I wish this was touchscreen. I wish it was a little easier to use. I'm just not the biggest fan of Mazda's infotainment. However, if you have Apple CarPlay running, honestly, that's pretty much all you're ever gonna use. So I really don't have any complaints with that from that standpoint. All right, so my honest thoughts perspective with this, stepping on the gas. It isn't as fast as I thought it would be given it has the inline turbo with the mild hybrid system. So I was expecting it to be a little bit quicker. Um, not to say this is a sports car in any means. However, you hear the numbers, you hear the engine, you know, I would think it'd be a little faster. Nonetheless, I'm a sports car guy, so obviously that's what I think about with every car. But for the family, for a nice normal family SUV, I'm pretty impressed with this. You know, I feel like years ago, to get a three row, you had to get something huge, something that didn't fit in your garage, something that barely fit in your driveway, something that is bulky, hard to park. Nowadays, there's a lot of really good three row SUVs. You got the Grand Highlander from Toyota, 
honestly no complaints with that the nissan pathfinder same thing so those three you know including this seem like pretty good options this interior is really nice and i would say this is the nicest interior of the three and again the steering wheel reminds me of a bentley so this steering wheel being such a focal point as a driver to me already makes this interior just feel so cool you have napa leather on the seats as well and yeah there are plastics synthetic materials and things like that all throughout so of course you're gonna get that in a car like this it's not a high-end ninety thousand dollar bmw x7 or mercedes gls so it's significantly cheaper than the european rivals to where the price feels nice i don't feel like this is overpriced whatsoever the last three days driving this you know we went on the trip yesterday and everything i didn't even know how much this cost looking at the specs and everything it's sub 60. so not bad at all i'd say one of my biggest complaints as a driver and as using this like a normal car is just putting stuff in places i hate having things in my pockets so the key fob i like to put my key fob and phone somewhere there's not a good place to do that this wireless phone charging pad there's no lip or anything and we had two of our phones here and the keys and when i stepped on it once everything slides out and goes all over the place under the seats you know not cool i wish there was some sort of cubby you have your cup holders which my normal water bottle doesn't fit so same thing i have my water bottle sitting in here barely hit the gas a little bit turn and it flew over here so i would like better center storage you know there's nothing on the sides and even these ones they're not all too deep yeah i probably could have put my phone and the key in there instead and then i put my water bottle over here but that's my only complaint as far as usable stuff i do like though this shelf right here the way it's designed i can actually set my phone here and i see my navigation screen obviously you would generally have your apple carplay running and your phone would be probably tucked away or in your pocket if you're not like me and hate things in your pockets but at least you can put a phone up here which is kind of cool so just a few little things like that i'm not the biggest fan of just minor creature comforts as far as what you get for what you're paying for in this you get all the safety features you have a healthy motor good efficiency plenty of space for literally the whole family and you can tow 5,000 pounds to where you know if you got a smaller boat maybe some jet skis or utility trailer you could use this as a utility vehicle and go on a family trip maybe to you know a mountain house or a lake house for a week or something so i could see this being a very useful family car so it's a good blend of it doesn't cost as much as a luxury brand it's not a luxury brand but it's also not just a basic cheap car so it's kind of right in the middle what you would expect but it does give you the look of the luxury brands the interior looks amazing the exterior looks amazing fit and finish is pretty on the normal side i would say so overall, I think if you're looking for a three row, this is something to take into consideration. We've enjoyed our time with it. I think it's been a very useful vehicle, nice to drive, nice to be in overall, and um, definitely something to put on your radar. But there you guys go with the 2024 Mazda CX-90. This color combination for sure is a beautiful spec. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for plenty more content, and we'll see you all in the next video. Here we go, here we go, here we go.